Okay, let's go over lab number eight. Question number one is pretty straightforward. We did it in class, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, the price of widget is 100, and this is uh, because this is the positive side of the or positive part of this profit equation, which is revenue, is 100 Q. So um, we know that revenue, total revenue, is price times quantity. So the thing that changes with quantity here is 100, which is the price. The cost function is the negative side of the equation, so the total cost uh, will be uh, 5,000 minus 0 0.2 cubed square. Remember that this is enters negative in the profit equation because it's the uh, cost. Now if I put this uh, 200, what are the variable costs? Well, the variable costs are going to be the part of the uh, uh, cost equation, the profit equation that actually changes with output. So that will be 0.2 Q square. So, um, so in this case, variable cost will be equal to, um, to 0 0.2, uh, 200 uh, to the power of 2. Uh, D says, what is the process maximizing level of output for this producer? Show using this diagram. Well, the price um, is 100. There's, there's two ways that we can go about it. We know that um, when the producer maximizes revenue, the marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Now, if this is the case, if revenue and cost are the same, then we know that, therefore, profits are zero, or the marginal profits are actually equal to zero. Marginal profits are zero. So, um, so since this is a profit equation, and we want to find out the point at which, um, you know, the profits are, the marginal profits are zero, all we take uh, is the derivative of this equation, and we make that equal to zero. And that, would, that should be able to give you the answer. Or you can just simply know, since you know that this is a profit maximizing uh, firm, and this is a um, perfect competition, you know that already, you know that the price is 100, uh, so then you know that the price equals marginal cost. So, so that's another way of looking at it. And find the answer. So price is 100, marginal cost is uh, 0.4q, so this is 100, and marginal cost is the derivative of the cost equation, or this equation right here, is the derivative of that, which is 0.4q. Uh, uh, so all you'll need to do to find q is to divide 100 um, by 0.4 to get the answer uh, to the problem. So you can do it either way you want, uh, and, and you should be able to get to the same same solution at that point. So that's 250. And notice that if you plug in 250 in the profit equation, profit should be uh, maximized, but the marginal profits, meaning the change in profits, should be equal to zero. Because again, profits are not changing since the marginal cost and the marginal revenue are the same. Um, all right, let me see if we can move this. No, that's not what I want. Uh, let's see. Now, the final uh, part of the question said, will the producers make uh, positive profits? And, um, and again, we, we, you can just simply plug in the 250 in that equation, and you should be able to find if the profits are positive or negative in that. All right. Now, question number two, um, I think we also went over in class, but that's, uh, so we go over, uh, over a little faster here. Uh, th the problem gives you the total cost equation, and the first question asks you what is the children supply curve for the firm, below what price will output be zero. So just remember that when we're talking in the short run, what you care is the average variable cost, because the fixed costs are fixed. So the rule that you're going to use to decide is if price falls below the average variable cost, then you're going to shut down when price is equal to average variable cost, or more, then you will continue to produce because you have at least more you know, you, you have more to pay for your variable costs and still apply some of it to your fixed costs. So the, basically, the, the rule whether to shut down or not, or to produce something or not in the short run, is price equals average variable costs. In a diagram, this looks like this. So if this is the average variable cost. And you know that you're going to produce at a point where the marginal cost equals price, so you're always going to produce along the marginal cost then what we're saying here is that the supply curve, the short run supply curve for the firm, is going to be this, the area 
on the marginal cost that is above the lowest point of the average variable cost curve. And the firm, the firm will never produce below this point because below this point right here, the price will be below the average variable cost and when you produce a unit, you're losing money after paying your variable costs, after paying for, let's say, your labor. So to find, and in this problem, we need, well, the first thing we need to find out is what is the, um, you know, what is this point right here? What is the lowest point of that curve? And in this particular cost function, everything is variable because there's no term in this equation that doesn't have a Q attached to it. So all, all the costs and this firm are actually variable right now. So... What we're saying here is that the total costs in this particular case are equal to the variable cost because the fixed costs are zero. So therefore, since we're looking for the lowest point right here of the average variable cost, then what we need to do is to divide this by, um, by output to get the average variable cost because you know average variable cost is variable cost divided by output. So in this case will be this Q3 uh, minus 6Q square plus 18q divided by q. So the average variable cost in this case will be q square minus 6q plus 18. So that's the, that's the equation for this u shape curve. And we want to find the lowest point of that, so we're going to take the derivative of that average variable cost, and we're going to make that equal to 0, so that will be 2q minus 6, and we make that equal to 0, then we have that Q equals uh, 3. So we know that at this point right here, Q equals 3. Now, um, what we're looking for is the price, right? So we're looking at the value of this P, that if it falls below that level, then the, the company will shut down, doesn't produce anything. So we'll need to plug this back into... Um, anything that goes along the y-axis, so we can either plug into the MC curve or we can plug it into the AVC curve, which is right here, this one, so that will be AVC will be equal to 3 squared minus 6, 3 plus 18, all right? And I believe that's equal to 9. Right, so we find out that at this point, this is 9. So if the price fall below nine dollars, um, the company will not produce anything. If a price is nine dollars, then the company produces; it makes zero profits in the long, in the short term, and in the long term because there's actually there's no fixed cost here. But if it's a price fall below nine dollars, let's say eight dollars and ninety cents, the company doesn't produce because in that case it will be um, having zero profits or negative profits. Now in this case, I'm going to suppose as 30 firms describe the long run adjustment in the firm, assuming that any new firm have the same production costs. Now you're given the demand um, equation now, and, um, and, you're, and you're told that there are 30 firms in this industry. Uh, there's a couple of ways of going about this, but one way is to find out what is the actual number of firms that will be in the industry, and then see if 30 firms, uh, if, if there will be more than 30 firms or less than 30 firms. Now, we know that the long run number of firms in this industry is going to be the point at which the profits are eliminated. And we already know from the previous question that when the price is 9, there's no profits. When the price is 9, there's actually zero profit. So we know that that is the price that, is, uh, that will be achieved in the long run. In the long run, the firm makes no profits or it makes zero profits. So that is the price that achieved that. So all we need to do is to plug that price into the demand equation we have here. So it will be Q equals to 180 minus 3, 9. And that's, that will give you the amount of quantity that you will have at the market uh, when the price is at the lowest point. I mean, well, no, when, the, when the firm makes no profit. So that's 180 minus 27, that's 153. So the market quantity 
will be 153. Now we also know that at that point we have found from part A the quantity at the film level was 3. So, um, so you know that if, if the market quantity is, is 153 and each firm is making, is making 3 units, then it must be uh, 51 firms operating, right? Because when we divide the market quantity by the quantity that each firm produces, we get the number of firms. Right? This tells you the number of firms. So we get that 153 divided by 3, then you end up with 51 firms, which is more than the 30 firms you have right now. So we know that in the long term, uh, 21 firms will have to enter this market um, before this uh, price reaches the lowest point of $9. All right, and that's the answer to this problem. Now this one is a little easier than the one before, so that's, you're given a cost function here of 125 plus square square, and you determine, determine the output of a price of 30 and 20. Again, you have to remember that marginal cost equals price for a perfectly competitive firm. Uh, so we're going to have to solve this equation twice, the first one with a price of 30 and the second one with a price of 20. The marginal cost is the derivative of the cost function uh, to output, and that's going to be equal to 2q. All right, so then the first one is 30 equals 2Q. So Q is equal to 15 when the price is 20. And the second one, 20 equals 2Q. Then we know that Q equals 10 when the price is 20. Now the second one, the second part of the question asks you, um, at, what pro at what price does the firm um, reach the shutdown point? Uh, again, the same thing. We're looking for the lowest point of the variable, of the average variable cost curve. Um, variable cost is Q squared, so we know that average variable cost in this case is going to be equal to um, variable cost divided by output. So that will be Q squared divided by Q, which is Q. So we know, therefore, that this is the way that average variable cost is. It's, you know, it's equal to Q, so when Q is 0, average variable cost is 0, and then after that is equal to Q. Now, we also know that the marginal cost is 2Q, meaning that the marginal cost is actually always going to be above the average, marginal, the average variable cost curve. Since the firms is always going to produce along this line, the, the, it's always going to produce along the, the marginal cost curve. It's always going to produce along here. So the firm... And so the price will always be along there, so there will never be a situation in which the firm will produce, I mean, at a level that maximizes profits, that will be below average variable cost. So therefore, there cannot be any price that the, that the firm will set, the, this firm will never set the price at a point below average variable cost. So at what price does the firm reach the shutdown point? Um, basically, is zero. Now, similar problem to the one we had before. If each competitor in firms in an industry has a short run cost function of, and the market price is 35, what is the process maximum level output? We know that P is equal to 35, and then we know that marginal cost in this particular case, it will be E5 plus uh, 2Q. Um, so, therefore, uh, make that equal to each other, 35. Um, equals to 5 plus 2q. Um, so then q is going to be equal to 20, I suppose. No, I'm um, sorry, not 20. So 30 is 15. And then what are the, what is total revenue? Well, total revenue will be uh, price times quantity, which will be the what is the 35 times 15 and then profits will be equal to total revenue minus total cost right so that that shouldn't be d difficult to calculate so I will let that uh, for you guys to calculate total revenue minus total cost
Second part says, suppose the fixed were 250 instead of 50. How does this change if the firm's output decision and profits? Well, remember that the decision to where to produce equal a price equals marginal cost. Now, fixed costs are not part of are not part of marginal costs. So if fixed costs are not part of marginal costs, then um, then if the fixed costs change, uh, <coughs> profit maximizing level of output so, uh, doesn't change. Now, uh, should the firm continue to operate again, if the fixed costs change, that doesn't change the decision because the, the decision whether to shut down or not is based on variable costs. So also a change in the fixed costs will not change the decision where to operate. So if the fixed costs change from $250 to $50, the firm <coughs> maximizing level of output will not change, and the firm decision to produce in the short run will also will not change. Now, we did this one in class, um, so I'm going to go a little faster over that. Final expression for the market supply curve in this firm. Um, well, uh, the first thing you need to know is that each individual firm has will produce always along the marginal cost, because we know that the maximizing level of output is price uh, is along the price equals marginal cost equation. So therefore, they have, each firm will always produce along the marginal cost. So the marginal cost for each firm is the supply curve for each firm. So for each firm, we know that the marginal cost in this particular case is equal to 10Q, and that will be the individual supply curve for each firm. But we have about what? Uh, what are many firms we have here? Uh, 100 firms. So what we need to do is to use that number, the fact that we have 100 firms, and the fact that each firm uses 10Q in order to find the, uh, a, a, an expression that has uh, either price as a function of the market quantity, not the small quantity at the firm level. But we know that if we already know from, from previous before that we know the number of, we can get the number of firms by the dynamic the market quantity by the... Um, the quantity at the firm level, and we know that we have a hundred firms. So, so basically, what we need to do is to take this. See, the, we have an equation here with big Q and small Q. We have another equation here that has small Q. And what we need to do is to get this small Q, get rid of get rid of the small Q, and bring this big Q because we want the market supply. So, uh, so we solve this equation for small q, we, we can able to replace it here. So if we solve this for small q, we know that that will be equal to, um, to 1 over 100 q. And if we take, now we can take this price and replace that, so that will be 10 times 1 over 100 q. And that's the market supply um, curve. Now we have it, uh, we have, have the price as a function of q, right? So, um, so we can use that for the market supply curve. So the market supply curve will be equal to C, uh, 0.1Q. That's the market supply. And what we did is we went from the, from the supply curve at the firm level. So this is a firm. And this is a market. Right? And at the... This is marginal cost as 10Q at the market level, at the firm level. And at the market level, um, this is going to be the big Q, the supply curve. The second part is, uh, is kind of easier because we already found the, uh, the expression for the supply curve is P equals 0.1Q. And we already know the supply curve. So to find the, uh, the quantity of marijuana, all we do is to make the 0.1Q equal to the demand, which we're given in the previous part, and then solve for, uh, solve for Q and P. So I'm, I'm going to leave that for you guys. And we did that in class. That shouldn't be very hard for you to actually find.